I'm doing a couple of VRs. Um, one of which is quite a bit overdue. Uh, but first, I'm going to have a beer. I'm going to have Bavarian Lager from the um, Brauhaus Tegensee. Now this was a gift from Joe at Messer HQ. He sent me a bottle of beer and he sent me a little Rough Rider uh, sod buster. Which is a lovely little knife. So let's try this lager. Now a lot of you will know that lager isn't my favourite style of beer. I don't dislike it. But I think making lager Is a lot like playing the blues and it's very easy to do badly. There we go. Now this is a hell, a light beer, 4.8% by volume uh, and the ingredients are simply water malt and hops as you would hope. So look at that, that is very pale, very yellow. It smells quite nice. Oh, oh that's nice. Mm. Much more flavour there was an expect, much more flavour than I was expecting. Very malty. Not um, not particularly bitter. Nice edge to it, but mm. that would be a lovely summer beer. That be a nice beer for eating with as well. So thank you to Joe. My Bavarian Lager. So, I'm doing two VRs. Uh, first one is a VR to the Fat Man, Chad. He's doing a 3,000 subscriber giveaway. So, congratulations on the 3,000. Well deserved. Uh, you must know Chad if you watch my channel. Um, but I'll put a link in the box below if I remember. So, he's asked us to do a video about something we haven't done a video about before. So here we go. Okay so let's have a look at something that we haven't looked at before in one of my videos. Uh, I have touched on the subject of books previously but there's a particular kind of book um, that I'm very very fond of and that is the field guide. Very useful if you're out and about to let you know what you're looking at. But particularly, it's the Collins Field Guides. The two that everybody should have if you're into the great outdoors and you're in Europe. And the birds and the wildflowers. Now, uh, it's particularly, it's these Collins Field Guides. Lots of people publish them, different sorts. Photographic ones are very popular nowadays, but for me you can't beat the classics and you will always know if you're in the presence of a serious or professional naturalist because they won't refer to the bird book and the plant and the plant book. They'll refer to Heinzel, Fitter and Parslow or their copy of Fitter, Fitter and Blaney. So why do I like them? Um, I like the idea of having so much information organised uh, in such a handy, compact, searchable form. I love the illustrations, I love uh, plant drawings and it's just a classic. There hasn't been a, a field guide to wildflowers that's ever bettered this one. And my copy, uh, if we see somewhere I think, is it here? Some... First edition 1974 this one is reprinted 1980. So you've got all the illustrations on one side and then the um, descriptions on the other side but you've also got a searchable key so that if you don't know what you're looking at 
you can start with how many petals does it have, what colour is it, if it's in flower, if it's not in flower. Um, you can always just leaf through. For trees you've got by leaf shape, so we start with the conifers. It's absolutely lovely. And then the birds, swap that over. Same thing again, all organised by family and all beautifully drawn. The other thing about these books is the books, they're made out of paper. Um, I'm sure lots of people enjoy reading on Kindles and uh, tablets and other such things, but for me it's, that's an abomination. Books should be made out of paper and board if it's a hardback. Here we've got Insects of Britain and Northern Europe from Michael Chinnery. The insects are not as heavily illustrated it seems because we've got large passages of uh, discourse but it's a searchable guide again as the others are all categorised So the key ones I think you should have, of course, are birds and wildflowers and insects. And then you probably want mammals in Britain and Northern Europe. Look at that, he's a looker, isn't he? Droppings. No, your turd. And then I think next you'd move on to the grasses, sedges, rushes and ferns. Of course, I'm sure you've all heard of the, the key diagnostic. Uh, sedges have edges, but rushes are round. Referring to the stems. So there we have uh, the Collins Field Guides from my collection. I do have others, uh, but these are the ones to have. I think they're fantastic. And I just look, look, like looking at them just for the sake of looking through them. So, that was my VR to Chad, the fat man, and the second VR is for Dino. This one's a bit late. He tagged me um, a while ago to do a video of my man cave. Um, whichever space in the house you consider to be exclusively yours, whether it's a cellar or a garage or an attic or a spare room. <coughs> so we're going to have a look at Mine, um, it's only a six foot by ten foot box room, but something you need to know. I don't spend a lot of time in here because there's no room for a comfy chair. It's more for storage. But as a consequence of not spending much time in here, it almost never gets any dusting or hoovering done. So if you're upset by the sight of a little bit of uh, grot, you're probably best off not watching this bit. But here we go with my VR to Dino. This is my little space. Right, so we'll start with the door. That's where I usually sit to do my videos. Above the door we've got a map and an ice axe. And then there's the wardrobe. Up on the wardrobe, all sorts of junk. Sleeping bag, rucksack, etc. If you move around. I've covered up as much of the walls as I can because they're bright yellow and I don't like them. So that's uh, a fabric throw. That's a junk shop carving that I've painted. Uh, Kershaw Camp 10. More junk piled up. Old stereo. The only thing that works on that now is the turntable and that needs a needle. And then down there is a filing cabinet. Jammed in there, we've got a guitar and a load of packaging materials for when I'm sending knives out. Moving across, we've got the bookshelf. Did a video on that some time ago. All the way up. There's a load of books piled up on the top. Then as we move into the corner, got some pictures on the wall.
Another guitar tucked in that corner. A couple of empty demi drums. These um, shelves with the big spider co on are from Aldi and they're shite. They're so flimsy that if you put anything in them, you can't take the weight. Hence, most of them are not properly closed. Another bookshelf crammed in. All sorts of junk piled upon the shelves with them. Some empty bloody hell hot sauce bottles. Right up onto the top. More junk piled on there. So this is now, looking at the window as you can see, that's opposite the door. So this is the other short side of the room. Picture that my lovely wife painted for me. Some books. Some knifeage. This is Nicest Knives Dead MacBook. Uh, here in the tin, I got some this, some small EDC blades in pouches. And down here we've got a box with some more knives in. So I move back. So we'll go down the other long edge of the wall, pictures on the wall, so I'm going to go down here, sorry about the jerky movement, pile of dirty washing on the floor, guitar jammed in there, bookcase with um, Chiro's knives, knives on the shelves, then these storage boxes are all folding knives. More junk piled up on the top. There we've got the field guides from the earlier section of the video. And then more bits and bobs that my lovely wife made for me. The Mexican there was an Easter egg from one year and the bunny was an Easter egg from another year. Goblets, I do like goblets. Boxes of junk up on the top. And then we've got pictures on the wall, some green men coming down over the altar. And then we've got the iMac, which is currently dead. I think the pram battery is gone. It's 15 years old. I mean, I had to change the pram battery once before, about seven or eight years ago. So I think that's about the right time now for it to need changing again. Junk on the desk. This is the little desk where I do the filming. Zoom in there, let's see if we can shine a bit of light in there. That is a collection of small gifts from various YouTube friends. It's usually a tidier than that, but this is what the room is like normally. I haven't done any special tidying up. Then there's a, a table that used to live in another room with a plant on it. and uh, trying to find a use for that. And back to the chair and the door. So there we go. Ten foot by six foot of Man Cave. Mm. This is really good. So, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed those BRs and I hope they're both suitable for the people who requested them. Chad and the Fat Man. Sorry. Chad is the fat man. Chad and Dino, and I'll put a link to Dino's channel below as well if I remember. I'll see you next time.